19 of the 95-96 year. Um, may we have the roll call by the town clerk, please? Chairman Cogso? Here. Council Chapel? Here. Council Jordan? Yep. Council Linnell? Here. Council McGinty? Here. Council McLaughlin? And Council Reed? Here. Would you all join us for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is citizens' discussion of items <coughs> not on the agenda. you please um, give us your name and address when you come to the microphone? Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Lori Phillips. I live at 8 Little John Road in Cape Elizabeth. And should I continue speaking? My request? Okay. My request is for the council to reconsider uh, permanent no parking signs on Little John Road, which is um, the road I live on. I'm the third house in, and there are parking signs. Uh, for the first three residents, no parking. Um, during special events at the park, and at Placid Park and Fort Williams Park, there are um, temporary no parking signs up and down Little John, Old Fort, Robin Hood, other than my house and two others. Um, so the only thing that the permanent no parking signs have done um, is create an eyesore, in my opinion, and and, and my neighbors, and also um, eliminate four stakes from being pounded into the ground by the Public Works Department, who come for every special event when there is a need for uh, no parking signs in the town. So um, my request is, I have a letter you know, asking um, that the no parking sign uh, be reviewed by the Chief of Police, the, the Public Works, who I've spoken to. Um, I feel that they're in agreement with me that um, it, it's actually costing the town more for the town to put permanent signs and temporary signs than to just add an additional four more signs. Um, I, you know, to have a sign on my lawn for five months for a firework uh, display and uh, that's pretty much all I can see because the uh, opening day for the park is um, before the May 1st no parking impl implementation. So um, that's what I'd like the town council to review. If I could, I have a letter to give to you, Phyllis. OK, thank you. Thanks. OK, and do you want the pictures back, no. the photos back? OK, we, we can give these to Debbie. And then I'll just take the regulars. All right, thank you. Is the um, council in agreement with having the manager and his two department heads review this matter and make a recommendation for our next council meeting? Fine. Yes. All right, Ma Mr. Yes. Madam Chair, but um, May 1st will be before the next council meeting. <coughs> Could they hold up? They probably will if they're in the process of making a recommendation to the contrary, okay. I would think. If I could just add, I did ask that in the letter, if they could just hold off until the next meeting. It's, it's up to you, but I, I did, since it's only probably two weeks into the May. There is no special event before then. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. McGovern, do you want to make any comment? Yeah, and you know, unless the council objects, I'm sure there are other things the public works crew could be doing, uh, uh, and they may be delayed in putting up those signs. Okay. Certainly. Thank you. Any other um, citizen discussion of items not on the agenda? Thank you. If not, we'll move on to reports and correspondence. Okay. Any reports from members of the council? You want to make <coughs> this proclamation under reports and correspondence? It's actually correspondence, isn't it? Or are you going to take it up later? Would you like to read it? I thought that I might just read it. Is that all right? I'd be happy to let you. Okay. Uh, the, the, the chairperson whereby I am the reigning uh, senior member of this council right now uh, has asked me if I would read this uh, <coughs> proclamation that I hope the council is going to all sign tonight with a lot of enthusiasm on Amer Older Americans Month. It reads, 
whereas there are 1,400 citizens of Cape Elizabeth aged 65 years or older, and whereas this segment of our population represents a great resource of skills, wisdom, and experience, which fuel the progress of our nation and of our community, and whereas this group, age group is the fastest growing segment of our population, and whereas older Americans make up a large percentage of the volunteers who serve our communities, offering freely of their time and skills and taking nothing in return, now therefore we, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council and Town Council Assemble, hereby proclaim the month of May 1996 as Older Americans Month in the town of Cape Elizabeth and urge all citizens and organizations therein to help increase public awareness of this occasion. Dave, this eighth day of April at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and I'm the first one to sign it. Thank you very much, Councillor Chapel. Any other reports or correspondence? Madam Chair. Yes, Councillor McGinty. I'd just like to announce that there will be an ordinance committee meeting tomorrow night uh, upstairs in the uh, assessing codes and planning <coughs> conference room. That's up here on the second floor. Um, Tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m., and we will be discussing wetland regulations, shoreland zoning, and the comparison between state regulations and the town regulation. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mr. McGovern, I believe you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, just very br briefly. I'm pleased to announce that Leland P. Murray, uh, Jr., is back in town, <laughs> and he wasn't back in town two days, and he has agreed to once again chair the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, so if anyone uh, has any interests or questions about the M Memorial Day Parade, uh, Jimmy is now back in town and uh, ready to respond. Very good. Um, I just want to announce that the Town Council the past um, week completed the evaluation of our manager and we look forward to spending working with him for another year. Um, the, also, for those of you who don't know, our town annual report is out. It is featuring the new school project. Um, much of the work was done by the school department, is that correct, in setting up and has quite an interesting color graphic on the front. And that in the Maine Townsman, which is put up at the Maine Municipal Association called Managing the Municipal Forest for March of 1996, it deals with um, the Cape Elizabeth plan that's overseen by our own tree warden, Rick Churchill. And it's a, a larger part of the article and very complimentary to his professionalism and his supervision. I also want to congratulate on behalf of the town council and the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, um, heartfelt congratulations to Cape citizen Joe Foley, who is a 1996 recipient of the prestigious Jefferson Award for Public Service. Uh, Joe tirelessly worked to establish and fund a Ronald McDonald House in Portland. Um, the town of Cape Elizabeth has also been fortunate to have Joe devote his time and talents to many town committees, such as the Main Street 1990 Committee and the Town Center Committee. Thank you, Joe. And it is an honor to have you as a citizen of our town. I also want to announce that the week of April 22nd is National Volunteer Recognition Week and that a lot of the work that is done in our town is done through volunteers, that we have over 127 people alone on just town boards and commissions, and some of those individuals serve on several different boards. <clears throat> I want to thank the Public Works Department for their, um, their prompt and their expert um, work they've done during this winter on our highways and with our sanding and their optimism in starting to sweep our streets in the past couple of weeks, thinking that it was the end of the snow season, and hopefully that optimism wasn't misplaced. Um, I believe we'll go on now to, are there any other reports? Uh, the minutes of meetings number 15, number 16, and 1917 <coughs> held March 4th, 13th, and 25th. Are there any additions or corrections to any of those minutes? If not, I'll take a motion on approved as presented. Second. All in favor? The 6 0. On to item number 99, which was tabled on February 12th of 1996 to consider a proposed condemnation of the building located at 537 Shore Road and take any necessary action. 
Mr. McGovern and I believe our code enforcement officer, Ernie McVean, are here to discuss this with us. Yes, uh, this item was, as, as, as is indicated on the agenda, uh, before you last February for a potential condemnation. Uh, Ernie has been working uh, very aggressively with the letters back and forth, uh, actually mostly two. <coughs> uh, we haven't had return letters. Uh, to the owner of the property, expressing concern with the progress of the building. In large part, as a result of uh, the building inspector's initiative, uh, the owner of the property did put a new roof on the building and made uh, some other repairs. Uh, nonetheless, the progress has significantly stalled out. Uh, and we're particularly concerned at this point with uh, the amount of debris uh, that is in the, the parking lot of the facility, that is in the alleyway between this property and the property next door constituting a fire hazard, uh, broken glass that is uh, on the sidewalk and in, in the driveway, uh, and also uh, portions of the building are not totally secure uh, from folks entering them. Uh, Ernie is here this evening to uh, uh, update you a little bit, uh, maybe a little in more detail than I've just described, uh, indicating uh, some of the, uh, what he's done to try to elicit cooperation. Uh, it'd be, it will be our recommendation on this item uh, that you do, in fact, declare the building a nuisance pursuant to the draft order. Uh, we're not asking for the building to be taken down, but to give us the right, after 30 days have passed within conformance of the state law, to be able to go in, to clean up the debris, to secure the structure, and to uh, put a lien on the property for our cost related there too. Uh, we hope that action is not necessary. We would hope that within the 30-day period that the owner of the property would get the building in shape, but uh, we, we really regret that up to this point we, we just haven't seen a whole lot of cooperation. So Ernie's here to recount a little bit more of uh, the experience since the fire last year and what the present conditions are. Uh, members of the council, we have given the Burgesses every opportunity available to take care of this problem. Um, they should have done what was necessary and what was right. And have, they've done very little, only enough to um, get them to the next week, if you would. There are a number of problems, like Mike mentioned. I've, I've taken pictures today and pictures back in December, and you can see that the property from December to, to date has really become a lot worse in, in terms of debris, um, st uh, storage of materials, glass, boards. The building is still open. Uh, kids can get in it. And it's those types of problems that uh, we need to address. And apparently, they're not going to take care of this problem, and it's necessary for us to, to do that. And I, I certainly would encourage that we uh, proceed with condemnation. Uh, that's these pitches on, and if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer them. Any questions of Mr. McVean? Mr. McVean, um, in the letter that we received from Structural Designs Consultant, the engineering, he um, wanted to be notified so he could conduct a final review when the owners had completed the work that you had requested. And you or neither you nor he have received anything to That's correct. That. That's correct. I asked uh, as late as last week for that information from Mr. Burgess. Um, I did walk through the site at the time with the engineer, and there were some, there were several items that needed to take, be taken care of, uh, which I can't say tonight that they, they've taken care of them. If, if once you see the, the pictures, uh, if that's an, that's an indication of the, what we're dealing with with this individual. He, he just uh, doesn't come through on anything. Um, I don't know if any of the other councilors visited the site, but I did go with you today on your second <coughs> visit. And um, everything that both the manager and Ernie have said is true. There is debris, nails, glass, and open areas that are accessible. There are some overhanging structures that are not secure. Um, if there are no many, no further questions of Mr. McVean, may I have a motion on this item? Is it rec? Yes. If I may, before that, I do want to disclose once again, I did at the previous meeting that 
both the Burgesses are longtime friends of mine from the period in college. Uh, we we both quite involved in student government and uh, attended parties at their home. And uh, uh, they are friends, but nonetheless, uh, I've tried to have an independent, objective view on this issue. Thank you. Is, is it advised to read this entire order with a different um, categories? Councillor Jordan. I just have a question. When does the town responsibility come as far as anybody getting hurt here if we condemn it at a point? Our responsibilities, we, we have none. Uh, we you know, have obviously, none. we do have responsibilities if, when I, if we ended up having to send some of our own workers in to clean it up after the 30 days. We're responsible for their safety, but obviously would be very careful. Okay. May I have a motion, please? Councillor Reed. Madam Chairman, did you want the uh, order read? Yes, please. Um, Madam Chairman, I move that the council adopt the following order. This matter came before the town council of the town of Cape Elizabeth, pursuant to the request of the building inspector that the structure and immediately surrounding area owned by James L. Burgess and Meredith Burgess and located at 537 Shore Road in the town of Cape Elizabeth be determined to be a nuisance pursuant to Title 17 MRSA Section 2551. 28. 28. 2851. Excuse me. Okay and others, <laughs> um, and for an appropriate order to follow. A hearing on this matter was held on April 8, 1996 in the town hall. The appropriate notices of the hearing were provided to the owners and to the parties in interest as they appeared in the Cumberland County Register of Deeds by personal service. A public hearing was held on April 8, 1996. Both oral testimony and written statements were introduced as evidence from the various witnesses appearing. Upon review of the appropriate state statute and after consideration of the testimony, written statements, and other evidence submitted at the hearing, the Town Council hereby determines that a nuisance does exist at the premises of 537 Shore Road in the Town of Cape Elizabeth and hereby adopts the following findings in fact. A. That the building has been damaged by fire to the point where it is dangerous to life. B. That Burgess has has made repairs to correct the structural problems of the building. C, that despite the repairs which have been made, piles of debris from the repair work remain on the premises in close proximity to the structure and constitute a fire hazard and unsanitary conditions. And D, that the above condition is unsafe and constitutes a hazard to health and safety because of inappropriate maintenance. The above described nuisance is hereby ordered to be removed and abated, which removal and abatement shall include the following. A, the piles of debris located on the premises shall be immediately removed by the owners and properly disposed of in accordance with all local, state, and federal laws which may apply. B, in the event the owners do not comply with the above paragraph during the 30-day statutory appeal, period provided by 17 MRSA section 2853, the building inspector is directed to take all necessary steps to abate and remove the nuisance. C, all expenses incurred by the town in connection with this proceeding to determine a nuisance and incurred in the abatement or removal of the nuisance found to exist shall be demanded of the record owners James L. Burgess and Meredith Burgess, and if not paid within 30 days of demand, a special tax shall be assessed in accordance with the provisions of 17 MRSA section 2853. The town council shall record this order in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds and herewith cause an attested copy to be served upon the owners and all parties in interest in accordance with Maine law. Dated Cape Elizabeth, Maine, the 8th of April, 1996. I'll second that more. Okay, there, um, there was just one misstatement that was Sorry. written, not by you, Rosemary. <clears throat> the attorney <clears throat> did not have the right date down for the public hearing. That should read February 12, 1996, which is the beginning of the second paragraph. That was no one's fault here. There's Any. The hearing, 
They both should, well, that's what I had. They both should be February 12th. And in the first paragraph. I was, our discussion over here was not complete. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? It's a 6 0. <coughs> Item number 125 to consider a recommendation from the Recycling Committee to place a silver bullet recycling bin on the school grounds and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern, I believe Scott Collins is also present. Yes, that's right. Scott Collins, the chairman of the Recycling Committee, is present to uh, indicate to you their recommendation. Thank you. Um, as some of you know, we are currently doing some waste reduction recycling efforts in the schools, the three school systems right now. And we have a couple of pilot projects on the go with uh, waste reduction uh, paper at the photocopier stations, um, reduction in junk mail that's received at the school and increased recycling. And one of the latest thoughts is to try to increase the recyclables at the three schools, uh, not only for just from office paper or white paper, but to increase it to mixed paper, junk mail, junk mail newspapers, um, magazines, and then also some of the uh, waste products in the cafeterias, uh, not food waste, but uh, waste containers that could be recycled. And uh, RWS has a recycling bin or silver bullet that's dedicated to Cape Elizabeth, and we'd like to put it in uh, on grounds, Cape Elizabeth school grounds, preferably the middle school parking lot. Um, for use of the custodians, uh, teachers, um, and also to the public as another uh, means for uh, increased recycling in the town. We'd like to do it on a pilot project basis to the end of the school year, uh, collect some data and to see how, how much increased recycling we are getting uh, in the schools and how much uh, reduction in, in waste going to the transfer station from the schools results uh, as a result of that. So that would be a period of a to the end of June, I guess. Any questions for Mr. Scott, Mr. Collins? I have a couple of questions. Councilor McGinney. I'm assuming the school board or school department has approved the placement of this. Uh, yes, they have. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke mean, with the superintendent. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and also, um, just for clarification, the parking lot behind the middle school, are we talking off Scott Dyer Road or are we talking? We're talking between the school and the, and the ball field. Is that right? I think down, down by the ten basketball court. Ba yeah. the basketball court. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's at the end where there's very few cars okay. most part of the day. Councilor Linnell. Thank you. Um, this is for, to your, it's experimental for the, the spring. What happens? Would that silver bullet remain there through the summer? Not, no. Um, would it return to RWS? Would it be? Well, probably in three months I'll come back here again with another proposal, which would be to put it um, in the Cape Variety parking lot, which was, I think, tabled uh, several months ago. Um, and we'd like to try it, um, move from the school system to Cape Variety for the summer, see how it works there, and then decide, based on the two pilot projects, where best to, to fit the, the silver bullet. Uh, for for eternity, I guess, for a while afterwards. If, uh, just a question, if we take the uh, silver bullet and put it at the schools now, um, is it, are we obligated to keep it for beyond June? In other words, uh, if, if we decided we didn't want to put the silver bullet at Cape Variety, um, do we have an, I mean, is it going to cost us money? C could it be returned s somewhere? I mean, are we... It's my understanding that we can return it. If, if we don't have a use for it, it can go back to RWS. OK, thank you. We currently do have it. It's just not in public use. It's uh, parked down below the refuse disposal area. OK. Councilor Reid. Yes. Um, Scott, I would um, like to sort of uh, dovetail on Councilor Um I'm not a big supporter of it going to the uh, 
Cape Variety, which I know will come up at another meeting again, but in case I don't have the opportunity to express my concern then. Uh, is there any reason we couldn't leave it right at the school? I think people, although there won't be school in session and there won't be school waste, I think people might get used to the idea of it being there um, on a 12-month basis. And uh, if you would at least consider that in your discussions, uh, leaving it right there uh, through the summer. The buildings are used. Uh, there are many programs going on in the schools all summer. And if you could at least consider that, I'd appreciate we it. We have not, but that's no problem. We would. Thank you. We have a motion on this item. I move that we approve this recommendation with enthusiasm. Second. Councillor Jordan. Oh, I have a couple. I have a couple questions. Uh, my number one question, I didn't quite get where it was going to be located as far as the school grounds because I, the, what I got was it's going to be kind out back and I think it might get other things in it if it's hidden very much. If it's going to be, as you can, can be seen from the road, I think it's not so likely to uh, get other type trash. That's what I'm getting at. And number two is uh, <clears throat> I'm one that uh, not too enthusiastic about getting one down to Cape Variety. I think if another bullet is needed in the town of Cape Elizabeth, it's needed over in the shorefront area. I don't know just where. I've been trying to rack my brain since I read this to a possible place to put it. And. Uh, my other question is more or less to the manager is I read the memo that uh, the one out back here is is hauled seven to eight times a month and that means it gets filled up every two weeks. Do you have records of that? Uh, does there any slips or any information that comes down? Pretty hard for me to believe because I've watched that one pretty good and I don't I think it's take more than two weeks to fill it. Thank you. The uh, I, there's folks from the audience even more expert than I. Four times a month. Mm -hmm. How many? Four times a month. Four times. Yes. Yeah. But the memo I got said seven to eight weeks. And that would be what? Four times a month? Well, to answer your See you. to answer your first two questions, I I don't think the silver bullet at the school grounds would be any more hidden than it is presently at the uh, right here behind the, this building from from public. Um, but that's a decision you have to make yourself. And I'm not here to, to answer your second question. I'm not here tonight to uh, request uh, approval for Cape Variety. I, I just mentioned that as a as another option that we were looking at, and uh, we will. If we feel that it uh, is something we want to pursue, then we would bring that recommendation to you at a later date. Councillor Reid? I have one more. Sure. Since I've listened to Councillor uh, Jordan. Uh, Scott, could you explain again the placement of this unit? You said near the basketball courts? Yeah, I don't, uh, I can't explain it ex exactly other than you come off um, the Scott Dyer Road you follow, follow the road in, and so the teacher's parking lot would be on your left, and then on the right would be for the, um, I don't know who parks on the right, but it's the parking lot on the right, uh, right side of the road. Okay, the only thing I would ask uh, for the placement to be um, understanding that people sit in their cars and watch both the lacrosse game, the soccer games, and the baseball games that are going on adjacent to those fields, so that if it's put outside the... Uh, where the view would be obstructed. I believe it'll take up three parking spaces, the civil boat. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe, Mike, you could help me. Yeah, I, I went over and looked at it today, and it, it would be up in that corner, what I would call the front corner of the parking lot, okay. closest to the uh, basketball court. And depending on which way it went, it took either two or three parking spaces. Thank you. I, the Jordan. Yeah, just one little quick comment. As I understand from the newspapers and what have you, the activities that's gone on in the school in the last month or so, I think there's more activities over there than there is outside, out back of this town hall. 
All those in favor? It's a 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 126 to consider a request from Goodwill Industries to place a clothing collection bin behind the town hall and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, I received this letter, I think, last month from Goodwill Industries. Uh, hmm. Goodwill Industries, uh, I think, is everyone aware, is aware, is for several decades in the area has had metal donation boxes. Uh, they've had one over at the cables of a transfer station, which has been extremely successful for them. Uh, it uh, is extremely well maintained. They're over there uh, three or four times a week to police it, to check it. It's worked out very well. Uh, they, they are looking to better serve Cape Elizabeth by having a bin in another location as well. Uh, they un understood how successful our recycling container was in the back of the town hall here and suggested that uh, they have a box there as well. Uh, this, uh, you know, one, it, it does help needy people uh, with uh, clothing uh, to purchase at a low cost. And secondly, it does help in uh, encouraging recycling in the community. And uh, that's why the item was placed before you this evening. Comments? I move we accept the recommendation. Second. Discussion? Councilor Reed. Just in case that this doesn't work, I was wondering what the long-term commitment was. There is no long-term commitment. We could ask them to pick it up at any time. The only concern is if it doesn't work out, there's a public relations issue in terms of, one, it not working out while it's not working out, and two, after one removes it, folks wondering where it disappeared to. Councilor McKinney. Yeah, my concern, I think, is the same as uh, Councilor Reed, and that is, as I recall, a couple of years ago, we had a problem down at the IGA with one of these, either Salvation Army or one of these, um, that became a, a trash bin, I guess, for a lot of, and I hope that the town manager would keep an eye on this so it doesn't become an eyesore out back of the, out back of the. Yeah, we, we've had a good, a good experience with Goodwill Industries. Councilor Reed. Did we move acceptance of the proposal yet? Yes. Excuse me. No, we've, we've, we've got a motion with a second. Yes, that's right. And I was asking if there were any other comments. Okay, I do have a comment I want to make. <laughs> we did have um, a couple of boxes, I believe, over at the IGA, and I'm not sure exactly why they removed theirs. I know the Salvation Army has um, added to their number of boxes there. And if the one up at the um, transfer station is so successful and they need to visit it and empty it so often, why not place a second one up there? I, I truly, as supportive as I am of Goodwill Industries, do not believe that we really want to start accumulating a lot of different boxes up at, behind the town hall. And I don't feel the manager should be the one who has to police it, for one thing. So I, I really don't support that as being a place um, to have an additional box. Um, for the recycling, it's convenient for the, for the town building center right here, but, but not a goodwill box. Council Linnell. Uh, I, I, th I think it's a, a worthy experiment. The only uh, qu uh, qualification I'd make is uh, if one of our distinguished counselors, uh, Council Chapel, throws any clothes away to give me a call first. All those in favor of the motion? I one comment first. I would just I would like to see it done as an experimental type deal because yeah. the problem with the ones that they move at the transfer station. The transfer station is closed on Tuesday and it closes some evenings, you know, fairly good season. This would be more accessible and I think if it was operated right it would be okay. But if it's piled like I've seen the one down the IGA in previous years, uh, they better know it's going down the road. Okay. All those in favor? favor. All those in favor? In favor. Yeah. In favor, that's five. Opposed, one. Item number 127, to consider authorizing the town manager to file an application with PACS to reclaim a portion of Fowler Road and take an unnecessary action. So moved. <clears throat> 
Did you want Michael to make a presentation? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Yes. All in favor? Discussion? <laughs> All in favor of discussion? <laughs> All in favor of the motion? That's a 6 0. Well, let's move right along here. <laughs> Item number 128. I don't want anyone to say I'm trying to shut off discussion. Um, to consider authorizing the town manager to file an application with PACS to reclaim a portion of Route 77 from Wildwood Drive to the town center and take any necessary action. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? It's a 6 0. Item number 129, to consider authorizing the town manager to file an application with PACS to fund phase two of the town center sidewalk drainage improvement plan and take any necessary action. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it for discussion. Discussion. Councilor. I just, I just want to understand, I want you people to understand me that I am not voting I am voting in favor of this, but I'm not committing to the project 100% until I see exactly what's going to take place, because I want to know just how far they're going as far as out here on 77 with this phase of it, and I don't, and I'm not going to commit to <coughs> doing surface work when there's underground drainage that need to be taken care of beforehand. Any other comments? All, th all those in favor of the motion? That's a 6-0. Item number 130, to consider the status of land acquisition necessary for the relicensing of the transfer station at the refuse disposal area and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, the town attorney is here to update you on this issue. There are. Oh, he's moved up. Um, there are certain questions or information we may want to ask of the attorney that probably for um, actual legal advice we may want to do in executive session, unless there's something new for you to tell us. Madam Chairman, I did speak to the uh, attorney for the Levis today. I'll be okay. glad to make a presentation. And if you or any members of the council would like to go in executive session, we can. Uh, when I was last here, it was March 31st, and this council voted to accept, um, in formal terms, a, a deed indenture by which you would accept a 2.4 acre parcel uh, from the Levitts in order to uh, have the necessary 250 feet of distance between the new transfer station facilities and their property. This was required by state law, and uh, the town wants to get on with the, uh, the project. The, um, we obtained all the necessary doc, uh, documents that evening uh, from the Levitts to consummate such a deal by which you would acquire the 2.4 acres, of course, in exchange for which the town would give a new right of way and a payment of $2,500 towards um, the Levitts legal fees for being involved in this process, uh, possibly a taking process. Um, we determined both before the meeting uh, as to one encumbrance and then thereafter as, as to another, that there were two parties who would have to sign off to make that effective. And uh, the attorney for the Levitts has uh, dealt with those issues, um, has advised me that there's no problem in regard to one, and the document to be signed by that party has been seen, agreed to, negotiated, submitted, and signed. So we expect that to be resolved uh, within the next few days. Uh, the other party will take more time, and the Levitts have uh, asked for that more time. Um, I think uh, I have uh, supported them in a sense that I stated it was this council's preference uh, in dealing with these citizens to do a mutually agreeable uh, exchange of their property for right-of-way and payment. And uh, that's their preferred course of action. That, that's what was presented to you on March 31st. That was which was voted on March 31st. So we're still proceeding along that plan. However, it isn't complete as of now. It, the, the, the title to the 2.4 acre piece that you would get is not clear and is not acceptable, in my opinion, for the town. Um, so I recommended that rather than go through the exercise of renotification of parties and interest, 
and having a, an appraiser sit here at um, cost to the town that a proper procedure would be to approach this along two um, avenues. The one is the existing plan, and that's what they want to do, and that's what they're doing as I'm here tonight. The alternative was, well, give us the permission in writing, acceptable to the state and acceptable to the town and to me as town attorney, which would allow the town to construct the improvements in accordance with the state of Maine uh, law on this issue. And um, they said, fine, that's, that's our second choice. It appears it's the town's second choice. It's better than a taking. Uh, we'll do that. And they have signed, sealed, and delivered original permissions uh, to grant the town that right to construct the facilities um, with the idea that we would hold them for up to 60 days from April 2nd while they proceed to get the releases that are necessary to do what we first agreed to. So we're on a dual track. We have in hand the permission which will allow you to construct the facilities um, subject to the payment of the same amount, the $2,500, which they have incurred with really the multitude of really three tracks here, the third being what I recommend we postpone again, which is the takings. Um, I just think, in my experience with this town, you've never done a taking um, for a project like this where the party was not agreeable and couldn't reach an agreement. So for my meeting with you in executive council, in executive session on March 31st, uh, I thought I was within my uh, discretion to say, okay, as long as the town can have that permission, can start construction and knows whatever happens, we'll still have that permission and we can proceed with the project, that that was a fair resolution. Subject to your agreement to it tonight, and I think what your options are tonight is to, I can uh, basically state a motion, but your option would be to uh, accept the written permission in the event uh, the Levitts are not able to deliver the deed indenture as agreed to last month. That would be the motion. The alternative, if you don't want to do that, would be to send me packing, if you will, to come back next month with the appraiser and if nothing else suits you that evening, do the taking, which means presentation to you of a case for which you would find the damages, issue the order, and then your job is done with the taking. So I, I'll be glad to answer any questions now. I'll be glad to go into executive session if one or more council members feel that. I don't feel a need to go into executive session this time with this sort of report, but I'll, I'll uh, do whatever you'd like me to do. So our choices are, your first one, accept the written permission and keep the options open for our preference. Accept the written permission and utilize it in the event they're not able to deliver a clear title to the 2.4 acres by June 2nd. And where does that leave the other option? If you don't, if that vote doesn't pass, it would leave us with back to the takings as the alternative. Um, we don't have the deed. We, the vote last month was not to accept the deed indenture unless those conditions were satisfied. Expressly stated that they had to meet those conditions. They have not met them yet. They want to. They're trying. They met. They think they have one under control, and the other one they expect to have done within 30 days. I don't want to keep bouncing back on this. I thought, if you have the permission, you can go to the DEP and commence your work. So that's... Uh, we have the backup motion that we carried over from last month of keeping the option open to our May 13th meeting. Would we know by the 13th I don't think you not? need to. You may, and if you do, your earlier motion is then effective. It's not effective unless those conditions are satisfied. But when they are, I believe I can go to the manager, request a... $2,500 check, record the deed indenture, and it's done. That could occur any time in the next 60 days. If it doesn't, the vote that I'm proposing would be that you accept the permission and pay the $2,500, and you're done. And that acceptance would be effective June 2nd unless they uh, get the deed indenture. If you don't want to go that route, you want to keep it open, you can, I can come back May 15th. I just wanted to make the options clear if that's the, the, the uh, desire of the council. Council Leno. 
Well, I'd, I'd like to make a motion and ask the town attorney stand by to <laughs> make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, I move that the town accept the Levitt's uh, written permission to locate and operate a, a transfer station site uh, that was dated March 28th, 1996. Uh, in the event the Levitts are una unable to deliver clear title uh, to the land by June 2nd, 1996. That's seconded. Discussion? The, the only, if I could, I know I'm not a, a council member to discuss, but that permission was delivered. Uh, the only condition Levitts put is that we pay the same amount that we would pay otherwise. The so 2500 has been incurred and they <coughs> feel they should have it. You, whether it's part of the same you may want to take an amendment to your motion to cover it in one. Okay, I could amend my motion to include uh, paying uh, the Levitts $2,500 towards their legal fees. The second also. Councillor Jordan. No, I just, I just feel that uh, even though I didn't agree with your last meeting, but I agree with you now and tell you so that uh, if in your opinion and you feel that we're heading down the right road and we can proceed with the permission that they are giving, I, I would go along with it. And then we have a chance to take the drastic step within 60 days of taking it. Is that correct? Well, with this motion, you have it either of the first two choices. You have accepted the permission if they aren't successful. The ball's in their court. Seems to me it's a win-win. You don't pay any more and you have a permission. We debated whether it'd be nicer to own the fee interest in that piece or just the permission, but with the alternative of the takings, it's, that is my recommendation, that you accept their permission. The, you know, the state law says you need it, they'll give it to you, and they'll actually do the trade if they can possibly do so. Uh, I don't, everything seems to be on the up and up. I think they're trying their best. If they don't, you have their permission. So I think we covered it. Go. Councilor Lanau. I just wanted to say that I, I, I think this is fair. I think it's fair for the town. It, uh, it's fair for the Levitts. And, um, it, and I think it, it, it protects the town's interest. And I think it also, uh, I think it's in the town's interest to be fair to its citizens. So that's why I support the motion. It was second choice. And both the town and the Levitts thought the first choice was best. But at this moment, we don't have the first choice, so. Not at the moment, but hopefully by June 2nd, we will. Any other discussion? Councilor, oh, Council, excuse me, Mr. McGovern. Yes. Uh, would I, could I ask a question of the town attorney through you, Madam Chairman? Yes. Uh, the bid documents for this project are now out, uh, effective this yesterday. Uh, it's my intent to have on the council agenda on May 13th the awarding of the bid to the successful bidder. Is, is any action being taken tonight, would, in, would any action being taken tonight in any way forestall the town council from acting upon that at their May 13th meeting? No, I think the, uh, the, the permission is effective. Uh, I think we could accept that. Um, it's either or. I mean, if the, if, 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 if the deed and debt doesn't come in and they say we, we can't do it, then we have the permission. That's their preferred course to a takings. I think as far as dealing with the DEP, if you said we have the written permission in hand, but we're trying to do it another way, that I can't, the written permission satisfies the state statute on that point. So I can't see how the DEP could complain. I'm holding the originals. They can't be taken back. A uh, few vote tonight to accept them. If the uh, first choice isn't given, I mean, I think I have them. I don't think something like that can be revoked. Um, I, and for all the reasons I said before, I, I'd rather do that than the takings. I think it's too extraordinary relief if, if there's a reasonable alternative. I'm going to ask the clerk to read back the, mo uh, the motion, please. It was moved by Councillor Linnell and seconded by Councillor Chapel to accept the Levitt's written permission in the event that the Levitt's are not able to deliver clear title by June 2nd, 1996, and that the town will pay $2,500 toward legal fees. All those in favor? Opposed? None. Six zero. Thanks for coming.
On to item number 131, to consider scheduling a public discussion on suggestions that fees should be charged at Fort Williams Park and take any necessary action. This was um, a recommendation and request by Councillor Rosemary Reed, and I will let her give some background information, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. The reason that I asked to have this item placed on the agenda tonight is that I believe it is time to have a public discussion with input from the public on the possibility of making uh, Fort Williams Park a revenue producing park. Although I do not have any specific recommendations at this time, I would like to request that we begin the process and start with discussions about whether or not we make the park self-supporting as stated in the Service Delivery Options Committee report previously submitted to the uh, Town Council. Revenues are currently paid into the general fund for rent, PSO, parking, and other events where vehicles are charged to park. Currently, we are maintaining portable toilets, the grounds, and utilities by tax dollars. Some of the discussion will no doubt center around charging residents and or, excuse me, charging non-residents and or residents of the town to use the fort during specified periods. In a study done in 1988, it is suggested that by charging fees similar to those of Two Lights and Crescent Beach, we would realize as much as $200,000 per season. In search of ways to reduce the tax burden on the taxpayers of this town whenever possible, I suggest we allow the public an opportunity to respond to the possibilities of changing the way Fort Williams Park is supported. Thank you. Um, I think it's also been the recommendation of the council try to workshop this first before we actually get into uh, the public discussion so we have some idea of how we're approaching this possibly in, in May. So that was a motion on your part, is that correct? That would be, that would be fine. Is there a second? Second. I'll read that again. What's it going to be? It's going to be a workshop. A workshop. On um, the 20th of May. 28th of May. To uh, consider how we're going to actually get this public. The 20th would be our next workshop date, um, other than the third Monday, because the third Monday is um, a holiday weekend, so. So your motion is for a workshop, not for public discussion. To, to um, workshop it as a council and then go on to have a public um, oh, you're discussion. Oh, you to go the public discussion part. That's at another, would be at another date. We have to have something in mind ourselves. I hate to see it even get started. That's why I'm bringing these things up. It was uh, <coughs> talked about in 1988, 1990, and uh, it's been on and off ever since I've been around. I've been on that Fort Williams thing for around 27 years, and uh, I think it's the worst idea that I've ever heard in my life to uh, charge any fees for going into the fort. I just want to go on record that I will be feeling that way and I'll be voting that way and I'll be talking that way as long as I'm on the council and possibly afterwards because I, I just can't see it. I think it's a terrible mistake and uh, I fought hard for toilets over there and I got nowheres. I got shot down uh, and now we're going to charge people to go into one of the finest things that there is on the Atlantic coast and we ought to be, oh gosh, we got to think very, very hard about it when uh, there's no, nothing doesn't co cost you anything to go into any parks, anybody in the surrounding area, nowhere else, except state, of course, you can expect them to, they need the money. But this is a very small part of a subsidy that we put into Fort Williams, and look what we get for it. Don't even talk about a subsidy. We're perfectly willing to put $85,000 into community services, and it, I can see that too. Don't mind it a bit. If we're gonna make the Fort be self-sufficient, we've got to make community services be self-sufficient, we've got to work on everything else in town so that the town isn't subsidizing anything. And that's the last thing I would do is worry about subsidizing Fort Williams when you're talking the percentage. I don't know, but Michael could tell us on a four and a half million to five million dollar budget, 87,000 and they get 23 back, 64,000, 62,000 dollars a year. It's peanuts for us to pay for the beauty that we bring to everybody. You see the letters, you see the reports that come back, you see the national advertising that the fort gets, you see the wonderful gift shop. I'd rather than see them spend a dollar a car, I'd rather have them spend a dollar or two dollars, which they'll do, 
at the gift shop. That's growing every year. I've said my piece. I'm, I'm all out. Any other comments? We're here for speeches tonight, or is that the work? Well, that's well, I got started, because I may I not guess be he, here. Oh, you may not be here. In oh, fact, I won't be here. Oh, Councilor yes. McGinty. I'd just like to comment what pretty much what Bill is saying. I'm not here tonight. I'm not prepared tonight to discuss this issue. I perfectly willing to talk about it at workshop. I think that's the proper place for us to sit down to, to begin any discussion if there's going to be some. So. All in so. favor of the motion? No, I just would like, oh. to, I just like to say something to my father. Here, uh, he, uh, he will be around when we have that workshop. I'll work hard to make sure you're still a council member so you can get your two cents in. Because what you had to say, I'm in agreement with a lot of it. And uh, what I'd just like to make a comment on what Rosemary read, that Councilor Reed read, that uh, uh, it gave me the impression that we didn't have any income coming in. And because the income comes in and goes into the general fund, means that it's offset a little bit of the cost of the fort. So the way that was read, I got the impression that it didn't really say that. And I just want to mostly get that cleared up to anybody that might be watching that there's some income and it goes into the general fund, but in a way it comes back to reduce the cost of the fort. I know it don't cover it, but it reduces it. Thank you. All in favor of the motion? Can I just add my two cents for it? Sure. Thank $2. you, Madam Chairman. No, you um, said two cents. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know that part of the part of the issue uh, that we'll be discussing is the uh, the impact on the museum, and uh, I guess one one of the ways I would look at this is if uh, we went ahead with, or if it was decided to go ahead with charging at Fort Williams. Mm -hmm. And we found that it impacted the uh, income at the museum and the ability of those funds to pay off the, their obligations. Um, I would certainly uh, uh, recommend that the uh, excess income that came at the gate uh, be applied towards that. Thank you. Um, we're not debating the issue tonight. All those in favor of setting it for a workshop discussion. That is a 6 0. On to item number 132. Uh, to consider approving the warrant for May 7, 1996, municipal election, and take any necessary action. And Town Clerk Deborah Lane will address this issue for us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chairman. We are requesting that you call a municipal election that will be held on Tuesday, May 7th. We are voting for two council and two school board members. The election will be held at the Cape Elizabeth High School Gymnasium from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. Absentee ballots are now available at Town Hall if anyone is unable to vote at the polls on election day. The Registrar of Voters is available to accept new registrations and corrections to the voter list here at Town Hall from Mondays 7.30 to 5, Tuesday through Friday 7.30 to 4. Please bring proof of residency and identity, and I would request that the Council sign the warrant. Council McGinty. I move approval of the municipal election warrant for Tuesday, May 7, 1996. Sir, second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? That is a 6-0. Item number 133, to consider approving the appointments of election clerks nominated by the political parties and take any necessary action. And that will be Town Clerk Deborah Lane again. Thank you very much. Uh, each general election year, the municipal officers are required by state law to nominate election clerks. These election clerks are recommended by uh, the major political parties from the town committees. Also, the state law does require that election clerks are nominated from qualified minor parties. Taking into consideration uh, the state law regarding the definition of qualified minor parties and major parties, this year we have just two major parties, which are the Republicans and Democrats. So in your packet, you will see a list of uh, election clerks which have been nominated by the major political parties. If anyone is um, wondering why the Green or Reform Party uh, do not have a submission of election clerks. It's because they did not, by definition of this state law, qualify as minor parties at the time. So that's why you just see Republican and Democratic election clerks. And I would recommend that you do approve uh, the recommendations of the local town committees. Mr. Chairman, Con recommend approval. Chapel. Second. Second. All in favor? 
That is a 6 0. On to item num one, number 134, to consider approving the financial warrants from the period of March 13, 1996 to March 20, 1996, upon which latter date Governor Angus King signed emergency legislation reforming the warrant approval process and take any necessary action. A motion. We'll That's a chample. Second. All in favor? That is a 6 0. Um, we have an item number 135 to consider entering into executive session, but first I want to give any citizens present who would like to discuss an item not on the agenda an opportunity to do so. There being none, um, we can move on to item number 135. Following um, the executive That's session, we will... Want to speak. I, I just wanted to remind everyone that next Monday is a legal holiday and the Thompson Wire Library in the Town Hall uh, will be closed for regular business. Uh, some folks may see some vehicles parked outside. Uh, some of us will be, in fact, be working. Most of us will be uh, because of a holiday we took last July 3rd. Uh, but nonetheless, the building uh, will not be open to the public, and uh, we will be getting some work done. Thank you. Now on to item number 135. <laughs> to consider entering into executive session to discuss a matter involving property acquisition disposition and take any necessary action. Uh, the council will not be coming back to the chamber following our exiting ex the executive session, so that would be it for our broadcast tonight. I move. Second it. All those in favor going into executive session. It's a 6-0. Thank you all for coming, and I want to remind you that Democracy is a participatory type of government, and to please vote on May 7th.